Hello everybody. I redesigned my personal website last week and while I was doing so I thought it would be a good idea to stop at the point where I was about to make it mobile friendly and record a video on the process of making it mobile friendly. That way people who are still struggling with making mobile layouts can get some insight. So my site is at the point now to where it's ready for tablets and desktop computers but it's not ready for smartphones yet and perhaps your site is in a similar state. Now after this video we're going to leave the topic of mobile friendly layouts behind us because we will have it pretty much thoroughly covered after this video. So this is going to be a case study of making a non-mobile friendly website layout officially mobile friendly. And you'll also be introduced to a helpful online tool that reports to you how to go about fixing all the issues that make your site unfriendly for smartphone screens. Just the act of making sure that your site passes the mobile friendly test can have an impact on your search engine optimization now that Google and other search engines are starting to rank sites that are mobile friendly higher than sites that are not. Okay, I'm going to go grab my URL and I'm going to pop it in right here and test my site. I'm going to analyze it to see if it's mobile friendly and which I know it's not but we'll see exactly what it says and I haven't gone through this process for that website yet so you're seeing this as I'm seeing it for the first time okay so it says not mobile friendly it shows you how Googlebot sees the page and it shows you a little emulation of how your site's going to look on smartphone screens generally and it gives me instructions on the things that I should fix to make it mobile friendly so it says the text is too small to read, the links are too close together, mobile viewport is not set, and content is wider than the screen. Content wider than the screen means that the user has to scroll horizontally, and that's not cool. You don't want the user to have to scroll sideways or pinch and zoom too much. Now the mobile viewport not set, if you see that, it's very easy to fix. And what I'm going to do is just go to develop PHP because in the source code I have that in there already so I'm just gonna take this meta tag with the name viewport and there's a few different settings you can set for your viewport tag okay now here I am in the home page of that website the index.php file and right here with the other meta tags or I'll just put it under this first meta tag right there so now I have mobile viewport set so this little warning or non-mobile friendly error is going to go away. So let me re-FTP my homepage up to the web and we'll check it out. Now that I made that adjustment, I'm going to reanalyze. Now there's only one. So the reason why we had the other two negative strikes go away was because we put the viewport and the viewport says width is device width, initial scale is one. Now the only issue I have left is that my content is wider than the screen. You can see my buttons or my links are all going to be big enough to click on. All my text will be large enough to read. But I just have to make sure that this menu becomes much smaller and is on the side over here. Or maybe we can have the links up top. And then the page content can be all in the center. You can see right now the page content is all, they would have to scroll a whole lot horizontally. And that's why they give you this strike, because you should have no horizontal scroll. So now what we'll do is go and put a media query in place for this website's CSS. And it doesn't matter what particular layout style you have or what CSS you're using. The logic of what we're about to do would apply to any website. Okay, here is the style sheet, the external style sheet for that website's layout. So that means it's going to affect every page on the site. And you'll want to make sure that you go through every page and analyze it and also view it on your smartphone just to make sure. Now I'm only going to be showing you how I do the index page but it would be the same for all other pages and if you're using an external style sheet for your layout you might only have to put a media query one place and it'll be real quick and easy. Now all of the changes that you want to apply to the layout for smart screens, any device or viewport that 768 pixels and less will get the changes that you put here so basically smartphones because tablets tablets will show your site at a bigger max width than 768 so tablets won't be affected unless they're turned to the uh, portrait mode when they're in landscape mode 
they won't be affected by these changes, but smartphones will. So if anybody goes to my site on a tablet, a laptop, a desktop computer, they'll be served up this CSS, the normal layout CSS. And then smartphone users will get the new CSS that I put here. So basically what I'm going to do is take the general knowledge of CSS that I have. And anyone with basic CSS knowledge can do this. All I'm going to do is make everything look right on a little smartphone screen. Okay, I've applied the changes that I want to my style sheet that affects all of the pages on my site. So I'm going to reanalyze. And I also did some tweaking to the home page CSS. And there we go. It says awesome. This page is mobile friendly. So now what I probably want to do is get rid of those little arrows or make the menu on the side just a little bit wider. I'll probably just get rid of those little arrows that are before the link content. Then I'll reanalyze. And hopefully that little left menu will look better. There we go, that's perfect. Now I'm not really finished, there's some things that I want to tweak. For instance, I want to get the logo set up a little bit different. And I still have to change the size of the copyright text. But you can see for the most part it's mobile friendly. And now I'll show you what I changed in my style sheet and on my home page. And then we'll call it a day. Okay, here I am in my external style sheet. Here you can see I put my media query. So for all screens, viewports that are 768 and less, they get these changes applied. And if you want to change, for instance, you see my body, I have all kind of little CSS settings in there. Actually, that one's not even doing anything. So let me take that out. So let's look at container. Container has a certain group of CSS properties. Now, for instance, for display table I don't even have to put that down in the bottom where we're setting up the layout for mobile uh, height 100 VH let's see container that's the same yeah the only thing that will change the only CSS properties that will change for this container rule are the width and the min width so really that's all I have to do I don't have to put all of the other properties in there only the ones that I want to change or only the ones that I need to change to make it a nice mobile friendly layout. And there's some more of this that I can slim down. But you can see that it's not very much. And I paused the video while I made the changes, but the changes only took me about five or 10 minutes. So in five or 10 minutes, I now have a mobile friendly layout. For a site that 10 minutes ago had an unfriendly layout for mobile. Now on the home page, I have some content that is only specific to the home page. So on the home page is where I put a media query as well, just to change that content that's specific to the home page. That way it looks nice on mobile as well. And this is this little bubbles application I have. If you guys want it, you can snatch my source code and you can view source. If you just go to adamcorey.com, you view page source, you can get that little program if you want. You just grab the JavaScript and the CSS and then you can have these bubbles and they automatically rotate. So in a couple of seconds, I think every 10 seconds I have it set to rotate to the next bubble. So you see it's like a slideshow type thing for content. And people can click the bubbles, see? If I click the bubble, it then stays on that bubble. And then the user can click other bubbles if they want. So I just wanted to add that in there. If you guys wanna steal that little application, I don't mind. Okay, so that about wraps up our whole little series of videos that we have for responsive and dynamic layouts. I'm going to do a little bit more tweaking to make sure it looks really nice when I view it on my mobile phone. And I'm going to actually view it on my mobile phone just to make sure that it looks nice. And it's really important to keep in mind that you can have elements that will only show for the smartphone screen users. And then you can have other elements that only show for desktop users or tablet users. And you can use the display property in CSS to make that happen. You just put display block or display none. Or if it's not a block level display item, you can just put display inline or display none. So for desktop users in your normal CSS, you would put display none if you had an element that you only want smartphone users to see. And then in your media query, you put display block and it will show up only for smartphone users and vice versa for desktop users.